Hello there and welcome back to PTS videos. Today I want to check another unique weapon, this time Tommy Gun with additional damage buff. You can see stats, so at the moment it is completely unmodded weapon and we gonna check what works better for our lovely Tommy Gun. Breaks 50% slower, faster fire rate, vampire and increased damage by 20%. The last buff is additive, so we get only 5.8 damage difference, no biggie. I will compare this one with bloodied version to see the damage difference for sneaky gameplay. Another good roll would be anti-armor version, cause anti-armor can be quite good here. And some other rolls, but first let's compare the mods. We have hardened receiver that is the best damage wise for not ultra sight version of 45 caliber and armor piercing receiver that ignores armor. Which one is better? Let's find out. Two keys. Here we have 114-201. Okay, gotcha. Let's swap it for another one. And here 150 and 270. Nice. Hardened receiver you suck, but I give you another chance. By the way, the difference between two receivers is free damage, and this is happening on PTS, who knows, maybe they screwed tank killer per card or something else. Let's try here, 128, 230, 230, 230, 230, okay. Let's swap it for the gun with armor piercing receiver, uh, you nope, I need mini hawk. 175, 315. So you see the difference, right? The same test, but with rank 2 adrenaline working at max. 261, let's swap it. And uh, 361, 100 damage more. With receiver, it's all clear, and we have only two battles, and one is clearly better than its opponent. In the world of stocks here, it is not clear which one is better. The game says that full stock provides you with better accuracy and Wiki says that recoil compensation stock is what you want. If we open Wiki, here it shows us that recoil compensating one gives plus 3 accuracy and as well reduces AP per shot usage. So let's believe Wiki, though smart persons say never believe Wiki. As well Wiki says that medium quick eject drum reduces AP usage per shot. Do not be fooled by wiki completely, I go with large quick eject drum, cause it has more bullets. 62 rounds with a large magazine, versus 50 with medium one, TPS is more important here I believe. With sights, I go with reflex one, cause AP usage per shot will be OP and accuracy is better. Here it's so clear. Among muzzles you should go with suppressor, because this weapon can be good only in stealth mode. Sneaky damage multiplier is a true god in this game. Energy explosive shit is another god of course, but he is unfaithful and not loved by many. Recoil is quite impressive, you can kill via watts or free aim. I will unequip Adrenaline and Tenderizer to test few submachines. You will see two damage numbers, first shot and when follow through working. Follow through is the legendary repair card that works as multiplier. In the description 40%, here 58%. But of course we have damage resistance that affects our damage outcome. I explained how everything works in this video. A825 means anti-armor, faster fire rate. I tried with hardened receiver here, that sucks by default. But another one reduces their armor resistance. So I thought maybe it will be better this way. No worries, I will test anti-armor again. B25 means bloodied faster fire rate, Q25 means quad faster fire rate, V25 means vampire faster fire rate. For Q25 and V25 the damage should be the same, but sometimes we can get a little bit different numbers. Some factors can affect the damage, for example range, and it sucks big time on this weapon. Once again no adrenaline, but I leave tenderizer in the pack. And we deal 293 damage. 
Now let me show you that anti-armor with armor piercing receiver is actually a good roll. It is not that OP as bloodied, but quite close. Just in case, bloodied here deals 368 damage. Speaking of DPS, our lovely guy loses big time, while reload time is the same for all three weapons. I have no idea what fire rate means here, but in rounds per second you can see on the screen. For handmade and fixer it should be the same, but that's what I got. Okay, so kiss. Now let's try crappy crabs and see how everything works together. And I need another victim. It would be... Oh, puppy crab. Come here, my friend. Yeah, vast probability sucks big time, actually, here. Let's try with headmate. Oh. I need another puppy crab. Oh, 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 oh. Brum. 300. Oops, it was a VAT screen. With fixer 327. What about torso of mummy crab? Let's try a torso. Oopsie. Okay. But before we penetrate here, look at this what's probability. Oh, Dios. Basically, lovely sub loses just everywhere, but with ammo capacity and recoil, if we compare it with a fixer. So, with fixer, I deal 138 damage. Not bad, not good, just okay. With handmade, 127. Okay, and now with our lovely sub. 83. I saw 83. Let's try again. 100. Ah, uh, 83. Okay. Yeah. Well, overall, lovely tap isn't a bad weapon. It is highly underpowered because the difference in damage between this weapon and fixer is more than 60%. But okay, it has a good recoil. The difference in damage between this weapon and handmade is more than 50% and it is a lot. Range is very bad, therefore what's probability sucks, damage sucks. The only good thing is ammo capacity, but it will just eat more ammo. To balance this weapon, the feather should increase fire rate at least 30% or increase base damage by 30%. That is my opinion. And you are welcome to agree or disagree with my opinion in the comment section. Okay, let's try fixer and broom. The ego is down. You will get this lovely stuff for completing this event. Thank you for watching. I will see you later. My throat is killing me, so I can talk no more.